You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, bar, arcade, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. Welcome everyone to episode 24 of MC True Long Island Story. I am your host. What you got there, Mark? I got a double fisted tonight. Double fisted. I'm your host, the internet champion, always ready, Matt Cardona. I'm gonna. Oh! Just cracked open a PBR Stronger Seltzer, eight percent. Now, guys, full disclosure. I'm Mark. Let me let me let you intro yourself first. Okay. I'm also here, producer of the show, Smart Mark Sterling Esquire. I just opened a strawberry basil. There you go. Uh, What I was going to say is, full disclosure, this is recorded before Homecoming. Mm. Mm. So while you're listening, and I want to put some positivity out there in the universe, while you're listening, I'm probably the GCW champion. (laughs) But as of this recording, I am not. Uh, the match is in two days and we cannot record on our normally scheduled day because being the positive person that I am, I plan on winning this title mm-hmm. so Saturday, yep. Sunday morning. I have a flight to LA to do universal Hollywood and Disneyland. Just picture the heat of me in front of sleeping beauty's castle. With that GCW title. <laughs> the heat! The heat, baby! <laughs> well, uh, this doesn't make any sense to the people listening, but good luck. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited and also worried. Um, but you mentioned, look, this show is brought to you by Paps Blue Ribbon, and you asked me what I was drinking. Uh, I just got back from traveling myself, so I'm in my house for the first time in 11 days. Uh, I really wanted a nice IPA, so I poured it while I did notes for the show. But what did I pour it in? Take a look the, at that. The if you're new Hustle YouTube. Loyalty Collect. Is that is that considered a pint glass? It's a pint glass, baby. It is nice, man. While I was gone, I got the shipment. Now, the reason I have this is because we are selling this only at Live 9. If there are these, extras, we will sell them after. I guess, but, but <laughs> that's going to be a B-I-T-C-H to ship. Well, that's why we have... K A N I K. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the first one to use it, and I can I can tell you guys all it does in fact hold a beer. So <laughs> look for these at Live Nine, and then I'm almost done with this, and then I'm gonna move over to the stronger seltzer. There you go. Uh, also, guys, uh, this past week was Comic Con, and uh, the Mark and Swaggle buddies sold I'm out. Assuming, probably, I'm assuming they're sold out. The the Bob Cardona, Zach's dad, Matt's dad, Micro Brawler. Could be sold out, but if they're not, check it out right now, majorpodmerch.com. And if you purchased it, thank you very much. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, We also dropped uh, the news at Comic-Con that there are more major um, micro brawlers coming. A new Matt, Mm -hmm. a new Brian Myers, a new Mark, Rory Fox, VSK, Chelsea Green, the wedding variants, Um, and then, of course, our new toy line. This is... This is me and Brian and Kinnick as business partners, like legit, like this is all our money, all our risk, and hopefully all our reward if it takes off, but major bendies coming soon. We will show the the official pictures at Live 9. It's Matt, Brian, Marcus Swaggle, and listen, we've seen the Mark prototype. It's beautiful. Yeah, and... I'm excited because I've I've seen the uh, business meetings, I guess, some of them at least, some of the decisions, and uh, let's just say there's more coming. So, In a perfect just, world, yes. In a perfect world, well, these got to sell out first. Right. Okay. We'll see. They will. Yeah. We're, we're the test. We're the guinea pig. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it's episode 24, yep. and uh, we're almost halfway there, really, because we said last week we were going to stop this weekly podcast once the show moves to wwe but we'll still do a couple podcasts to cover all those episodes we'll cover some bonus things like we definitely need an episode covering harlowski we definitely need an episode covering uh last resort 
you know? And maybe we like an episode, episode covering the weird episode that nobody saw. Well, that will be a week of the pod. Oh, that's oh no, 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 you're right. It won't be. So yeah. That'll be you're right, 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 right. That's so, in the WWE time. Right. right. So it'll we'll do the weekly pods to coincide with the weekly old YouTube shows until it switches over to WWE. And then we'll probably do, I don't know, maybe we'll do maybe we'll let the fans choose like ten really interesting topics. Or figure we'll figure that out. We got yeah. we got half a year. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, all right. Well, I got a couple follow up, just quick things. Jason Arpin. Uh, he says, Ring Rope Rebellion. That's me. There you are. <laughs> so, so he's watching. Uh, thanks for doing that, Jason Arpin. And then LO1BO2 says, Darren Young looked so much like John Cena. It was amazing. Not sure if anyone in WWE ever mentioned it. I almost mentioned it last week. I always thought they looked so similar. Oh, people mentioned it all the time backstage. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. For, for sure. And I was, I meant to ask you that, and I was like, I don't know about that. All right. That's really it. I mean, obviously, full disclosure, we are recording a little early, so there wasn't as many comments because it's only been up as we record this for a day. Um, was there Not even. That you it came out this morning. Out? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're right. I, man, <laughs> dude. I made that live in the airport this morning. That seems to me like three days oh, ago. Oh, bro. Tell me. It's like the impact <laughs> tapings. Like, you know, I had... Five matches in three days, and the last day, I'm not going to reveal what the matches were. But it's like, oh my god, that match was earlier today. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to tell you this. This is way off topic. Uh, I had myself Chick Fil A breakfast in the Detroit airport. I had a chicken, egg, and cheese biscuit. Bro, I don't normally eat that stuff, but it was the greatest. thing Tell ever. me, it's not the greatest thing ever, bro. It was bro. so good. I was. It's it's incredible. For some reason, though, a couple weeks ago, I went to Atlanta. I was in the Atlanta airport. They don't serve the egg portion anymore. Really? So it was just chicken biscuit, cheese and I still ate it. I still ate it. No they cheese had either. that as an option, but, the, but yeah. th- this one had the egg on it. Wow. It was so... I, oh, dude, I, bro. It's so good. It's only the second time I ever had chicken. And it's like it's so filling where it could be enough, but I'd rather stuff myself with a second one. <laughs> oh, I only had one. I only oh, had yeah. One. It was great. And... Shout out to the Detroit airport because they moved me. A, they, there was like a huge line. They held the plane? They didn't hold the plane. I didn't even need to. I was then 20 minutes early. It was great. All right. Let's talk about um, the What were you doing in Detroit? I was, uh, dude, my <laughs> airport, I fly into Hartford, which is a small airport. Okay. No, Wasn't no, AEW in Texas? It was, but there's no directs anywhere. And pl- but you went to Detroit? Directs. If you look at the map, it's on the way. Okay. It, so Texas to Detroit to Hartford. It, okay. I was like, this makes no sense, but when you look at it, it does make sense. Okay, okay. Anyway, there's no directs. All right, Broski of the Week, baby. The Broski of the Week. Broski of the Week, all you got to do is, now listen very, very carefully, guys. You need to find, wherever you listen to this podcast, which, by the way, subscribe, uh, leave us a great review. Rate us five stars, screenshot that review, then find the pinned tweet on my Twitter at the Matt Cardona, quote tweet it, and in that quote tweet, uh, screenshot your review and use the hashtag Broski of the Week to be eligible. You will win Matt Cardona 8x10, available, mattcardonamerch.com. You will get, oh, look at this, baby, the Broski of the Week headband available on mattcardonamerch.com, and... Let me get it out here. The Broski of the Week sticker available just by being Broski of the Week. And it's, it's an exclusive, baby. Uh, so let me read that Broski of the Week uh, review ski. By the way, I moved on to the uh, Stronger Seltzer. Oh, there you go already. Uh, at Jack X Connor. Um, here we go. Long overdue, this podcast, much like the original Z, True Long Island Story, never fails to bring a smile to my face. I'm a huge fan of the social media pioneer, always ready, Matt Cardona, formerly Zach Ryder. Matt seems like an awesome down-to-earth and oh, down-to-earth guy and his genuine 
unabashed fandom is no doubt why he resonates with so many people. Glad that he lives in Orlando now, too. Hope to run into you in the parks one day, broski. Hashtag WWWYKI. Well, Jack, you are the broski of the week. Nice. Congrats. Congrats. All right. Before we talk about this week, let's hear a little word from our sponsors. The Major Pod Network has a new tag team partner, Paps Blue Ribbon. Everybody needs some liquid courage to make their own weekly purchases. Scratch that figure itch and scratch that PBR itch. Get your PBR beer, get your PBR hard coffee, and get your PBR stronger seltzer. 8%? If you're listening to this, you're already a major mark. Now it's time to become a major PBR mark. Use the hashtag MajorPBR and post your pictures and videos of you major marking out. Paps Blue Ribbon and the Major Pod Network, the new tag team champions of the world. Of the world! But we're definitely not getting any new figures from Mattel. All Matt Cardona on July 25th says, Tonight on Raw, I debuted my new shirt. I had a match with an entrance, and I won. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. We'll talk about that more later. July 26th, you want more Zack Ryder merchandise? Contact at WWE Shop, and more specifically, at Barry the Villain. <laughs> Who's Barry the Villain? And what, he, wor- and you- he, he worked at WWE Shop at the time. And you just... Inundated them with your whatever seven hundred thousand fans at the time. July twenty sixth, go out of got out of a speeding ticket by giving a cop a rare autographed Zack Ryder card that I had to win on eBay. I don't know if that's true, but it might be. <laughs> well, you would have just made a joke about it. Yeah, I don't know. It has to be true. I don't recall. <laughs> I I could see that happen. You bought that. You bought it on eBay. Gave it to him. July 26th. Hey, Mike the Miz, I have a higher clout rating than you, but you're still my broski, broski. Did you guys used to have, I don't know, social media rivalry? Yeah, and at that time, I was very, uh, almost like the AEW rankings, like how they, they're like, ooh, let's see how high I can get you know, before I get my title shot. Mm-hmm. I, there was a website I used. I forgot what it was called. I feel it was like some celebrity fan page listing or something like that. And it would list you know, wrestlers by followers, clout. And I always was trying to get higher and higher and higher. Mm. Eventually, I'm in the top five. Wow. Yeah. Like celebrities. Not just no, no, wrestling? No, 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 no. Top five of wrestlers. <laughs> Not I top imagine, five celebrities. I imagine Brad no. Pitt. Oh, <laughs> at one point, I'm top five um, in WWE. It's funny. We talk about the episodes that we're not going to talk about, like the second half. I must mention it in one of those where it's on Raw, like the Did You Know graphic, the top five uh, WWE superstars with the most followers, and they leave me off the list even though I'm in there. <laughs> yep. Can you believe that? Insane. Yep. Somebody That's... made that decision. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. That's. Oh. I mean, like, is that not a slap in the face? Yes. Like, that's where it's like, what am I even doing? Yes. You know. Oh my god, that like hit me right here, <laughs> bro. I, I still remember. I still remember. I. I'll never forget. I want to say that we're in uh, St. Louis, and I'm watching Raw in catering, and it's on like the screen. And I'm like, are you f-ing kidding me? Are you f-ing serious, bro? <laughs> <Right there. laughs> um, yeah, I, I, me, I feel like I would be like, I'd feel bad going into work at, all the time, like knowing that somebody has, you know, not, not has it out for me, but is clearly doing something to hold right. me back. Or it whatever. is what it is. That's why we're not really going to talk about year two. <laughs> All right, July 27th, happy birthday, Wiggler, at Heel Ziggler. So it was his birthday, July 27th. Oh, wow. So it's July 22nd right now as we record this. So remember, 
it's it's Ziggler's birthday in a couple Happy days. birthday, Ziggs. <laughs> um, what's Wiggler? I have no idea. Oh, maybe you misspelled it. <laughs> July twenty sixth at JTG is annoying me. Was he annoying? Probably. <laughs> I love Jay. I don't know what that's about. We've talked about it. We've talked about it before. All right. <clears throat> Matches that week. You had a busy week. Episode goes up last week on the 21st. You fly out to the hometown of one producer extraordinaire, Samar Mark Sterling. Mm. You go to Springfield, Massachusetts. By the way, you probably did not fly. You probably drove. Probably drove, yeah. Seems drove like a drive. to Springfield, Massachusetts, the Mass Mutual Center, the place that I went to many shows as a child. Uh, in fact, I would wait outside. This was before Ticketmaster, before internet tickets. Okay. You would, you would have to, if tickets go on sale at 6 a.m. on Saturday, the 25th, you go, you wait in line for okay. hours at 4 a.m. Okay. I would go at 4 a.m. with Steve Negron. We would wait out. Whatever, we would go in, buy tickets at the box office. Old school. Shows. Old school. Anyway, so there you go to the Springfield Civic Center. You drove there. You are defeated by a heel R-Truth. Okay. The next night, you drive yourself to Wildwood, New Jersey. Interesting. Okay. The Wildwoods Convention Center. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing Springfield, Mass., you probably go home that night. Maybe. You get home uh, probably at 2 in the morning, sleep a little, wake up, go to Jersey. Eh, don't recall. It's possible that I would have went to Jersey, but I wouldn't have stayed in Wildwood. That's like a beach town. I don't know. I don't right. remember. But there, David Otunga and Mike McGillicuddy uh, are the champions. They defeat Primo and Zack Ryder. So last week I said, you and Santino get a title shot. That is yeah. not true. That never happened. It wasn't I, a title I misread this, and it's not Santino. It's Primo. So randomly at a house show, you and Primo get a title shot against Atunga and Miguel Cuddy. Okay. You lose. Okay. The next night, uh, you drive to Upper Marlboro, Maryland. This is a hell of a loop, man. Hmm. Uh, where R-Truth defeats Zack Ryder again. Okay. But here's the big one. 725-11 on Raw. Uh, at the Hampton Coliseum in Hampton, Virginia. Oh, my God. Springfield to Jersey to Maryland to Virginia in four days. I mean, that's it sounds like typical to me. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Okay, then you have to go. Seemingly, you drove this whole thing, and then you have to drive back from Virginia? I, I feel like I would have flown home from Virginia. Oh, uh, okay. All right. All but right. I don't recall. Maybe I did drive. Crazy. Anyways, Zack Ryder defeats Michael Cole in 26 seconds. <laughs> um, so a little bit more on that in What's Up in the WWE. So July 25th, 2011 uh, in, in Virginia. Uh, so first, Raw would host an unprecedented second WWE title later on in the evening between recently crowned WWE champion Rey Mysterio and John Cena. So Rey Mysterio beats The Miz. In the end of that tournament, 13 minutes, I remember watching the shit out of this Raw. Doesn't he and lose immediately? So that night, yes. So then yeah. late in the main event of the night, John Cena beats him. And I remember being devastated by that. I was like, oh yeah. my God, this is so cool. Rey Mysterio comes out of nowhere, wins the title. John Cena wins it back. Whatever. I mean, in retrospect, you're keeping that John Cena, CM Punk uh, feud going. Sure. It makes total sense. But uh, Ray Mysterio was. So the second bombshell dropped shortly afterward. WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross would be returning to the Raw announce desk. So Triple H is in charge. Sauce it. By the way. Sauce it. When the game announces the decision, current announcer Michael Cole mouthed off in protest. As a result, Triple H arranged a match for him later in the evening against an unnamed opponent. So later on. After abandoning his post earlier in the program, announcer Michael Cole was made to pay. Thanks to WWE's new COO, Triple H, the superstar collecting the toll, Zack Ryder. The Long yeah, Island baby. IC punished the egotistical talking head and gave his <laughs> legion of broskies something to cheer about. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. So what's going on with this match? 
I remember it's like the worst Rough Rider in history. I remember he's like dressed like Triple H and comes out to Triple H music. He's wearing trunks. Um, I'm super excited to be on Raw. I'm super excited for this opportunity. This is great. You get there and they're like, hey, you're wrestling Michael Cole tonight. And you're like. Yeah, I don't know if I was told the day before. I don't remember. Um, One of these Raws, I don't know if it's this one or in a couple weeks before I come out, they play like a little package of like the YouTube clips and stuff. I don't know if it's this particular week, though. I don't could recall, be. so it, maybe it someone can let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think this is a cool spot? Yes. All right, maybe here's where it begins. And this is kind of where it starts, kind of, you know, I've gotten the shirt, you know, like things are starting to really take a turn. So I'm getting a little taste, you know? It seems like a spot, like psychologically for the WWE, this is a spot for a top baby face. A nice little beat up yeah. Michael Cole thing, you know? Yeah. So this is this is a really neat it, spot. Is, it was great for me. Who should we do? Who should we use? Let's use Zach Ryder. Somebody yeah, said that. I, somebody said it. I don't know who said it, but thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So that's cool. Um, and then finally on Raw, CM Punk shocked the WWE faithful when, after having departed the company two weeks earlier, he surfaced inside the arena carrying his WWE title. The audience, as well as millions at home, watched the confrontation, the detention, the body language, which man would blink first, which WWE champion was the rightful heir to the WWE's most coveted object, the frenzied air of anticipation. However, there would be no determination. The second city savior and the champ merely stood hoisting their respective WWE titles skyward as if to declare their proper place in the history books despite the protests of the other. Is this where he brings back like his original indie song, like the one, the Cult of Personality? Is that here? I think when he officially comes back, this is oh. so he's not right. Like he just came through the crowd in this. Oh, oh, oh okay. So he's okay. still technically this whole month he doesn't work for the WWE. Got it, got it, got it. So I think, and, and is he, it crazy? Like ten years later, now he's like the talk of the the wrestling world. Like is he going AEW? Right, right. Yeah, it's crazy. Is he coming back to wrestling at all. Um, speaking of, did did you by by any chance listen to the art of wrestling that would have come out this week ten years ago with Colt Cabana? Um, I didn't yet. This okay. this was your this was your week. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I I got to do it. We'll we'll do a follow up for next week. I think I have to join his Patreon to listen. Oh, okay. Uh, I, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, by the way, shout out to the uh, wrestling anonymous. I've talked about it before. Great podcast. It's one of my number ones right now. I love it. It's great. It's one of your number ones? You can only have one number one. Uh, one of my top five, I guess. <laughs> there you go. It, it might be actually the number one that if I'm like, hmm. yeah, I have everything from the week to listen to, that'd be the first one I choose. It's Got snackable, it. man. 30 minutes? That's kind of what I want this podcast to Me be. too. Let's, so let's get rolling, baby. Let's get rolling. Episode 24. You open, but no background. What happened? So I noticed that no set... And uh, I am wearing the new shirt. Yes. First day with the new shirt. Looks great with the headband. So I remember, that's not the official headband yet, but that's like, it is the headband. It's like my gear version of what they're going to make. But I remember, so this week is a little follow-up. Like the ultimate broski thing had had happened last week. Mm -hmm. And in one of those live events that that you just talked about, I did a run-in at the end of the night dressed as the ultimate broski. There is footage online. Maybe we can insert that here uh, where literally it's like this whole like schmaz at the end of the night and the ultimate warriors music plays, but it's not the ultimate warrior. It is me, the ultimate broski. And I run out, I'm doing the, the, the stiff arm clothes lines. I do the big splash. I'm shaking the ropes. There's a big money shot. At the end of things like me, Cena What's that? like Ray Mysterio's involved. Uh, and I was so excited. I was so pumped. And if John Cena says to do something, you do it. And also, like, you know, somebody so knew about it. They played. Have, he must have saw the episode from last week. Right, right. Okay. And he was like, this uh, is great. Yes. So I have the full makeup, everything. As I'm leaving the town, Mike Rotundo, uh, he, 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 he calls me. Because, you know, the, the producers have to write a report and send it to, I guess, John, Johnny Ace, John Lauren S at the time. Johnny Ace was not happy about it. 
Uh, so, uh, Mike tells me like not to talk about this on the internet, like not to talk about it. No big deal. Next, next day I get to raw. We're breaking the rules. Next day. First of all, now keep in mind, this is like warrior is not back in WWE's good graces yet. Mm. You know, he, the the self-destruction ultimate warrior is the last thing he did that DVD and he didn't even do it. They made it about him. So I'm doing this character and the the next day, John Laurinaitis, Mark Carano, they pull me aside, and they're like, kind of like giving me shit about this, saying that the Ultimate Warrior is going to sue me, and they're going to he's going to take my house, and I said, well, I don't have a house, and they said, <laughs> they said, well, they're going to take your parents' house. <laughs> it's not going to happen. They're going to take your parents' house. Um, a funny story, also. I got that figure made as a custom. We could probably show it here. Uh, just put it on the screen. And Ultimate Warrior, but it was like somebody who controls the account, DM'd me, like threatening me that using the Warrior IP. I'm like, no, 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 this is not real. This is a custom. I had to explain what a custom was. Oh, my. You know, I said, this is a one of one. A fan made this. It's not for sale. Mattel didn't make this. He's, try- he's trying to, like, scare me with, like, intellectual property laws. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is, this is not real. A fan. It's a custom. Handmade. Fan made. Whatever. So when you're getting in trouble, um, are you like, Cena told me to play? Do it. Do you rat out Cena? No, I wasn't a big ratter outer. You know, I was never, never. Do they think you walked to well, I, I, with a CD I, with like full metal, <laughs> whatever one? I know, like I know. Handed it to the guy like play, this, play track four. I know, I know. But and then years later, when Warrior does come back, um, the night of that infamous speech, the day before he passes away, right before his segment is me getting squashed by Rusev, mm. and as I'm walking. Like into Gorilla, he's walking out for his, you know, promo, mm-hmm. and we meet eye to eye. And this is the first time we meet. I introduce myself. He's like, "Oh yeah, like you do your gimmick. I'm sorry, you do my gimmick better than me." Right. And it was like, a, great. it was the ultimate no pun intended compliment. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I think he knew I was just being a fanboy, and I was never putting, I was never burying the warrior. Like I put him over last week. Exactly. I put him over wrestling buddy. Yeah. Uh, so that's my ultimate broski story. But then back to this T-shirt. So this well, actually, I, I so I got to know your bro that actually revolves around this. So let's just do this now. What's the okay. know your bro? Know your bro. Use the hashtag know your bro. Ask me a question about next week's episode. All right, Connor Hawks at Connor Hawks says, simple question: Was that your childhood warrior wrestling buddy? Crazy to think years later you'd pretty much reboot the line yourself. Hashtag no, it was not. Uh, I re got them. Like in my twenties or late teens, mine really? was destroyed and all beat up. I used to wrestle with it in the backyard, leave it out in the rain. Yeah, Me this, too, yeah, yeah. We used to use it in the pool a lot. Did you ever do that? Mm, I mean, not I'm not sure if I ever did, but not often if I ever did. No. I have this burning memory of having the Warrior or Hogan on my shoulders while Steve Negron jumped off the ladder for a Doomsday Device. Oh wow, dangerous stuff. Um. So, yeah, so I remember this venue. I remember this day pretty, pretty vividly. For a the warrior, like gonna you know sue me and take my house mm-hmm. conversation. Also, I feel like I feel like I tan at the building that day. So like all day I'm like glittery, not or very very shiny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looks like I'm wet all day because I'm tan. I tanned at the building that day. Mm-hmm. Because maybe maybe I did drive from home, or maybe I just got in really late. It was a long drive, or something like that. Right. You know. Um, and then also, it's the first day I get my T-shirt. The merch guys have it, and it's like such a big deal. And what I really popped for is that so many of the boys got one, like wanted one. Oh yeah, that's cool. So like a lot of the boys were wearing it, and uh, like that was special to me. You know, that it wasn't just special to me. It was special to other people like, because they, because the boys, I would say at least the majority of them could see I was busting my ass and were rooting for me. And, you know, that was, it was a good feeling to see so many of them wearing that shirt that day. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally get it. That's cool. Yeah. So that you're talking about the, uh, the live event that you were the ultimate broski. That's what you're saying. No, no, no. Oh, At the raw. That raw. Okay. Because fine. it was the first time it was brought. 
Got it. I don't know if it was sold at the venue that night, but it was the first time I ever saw one and I was able to wear it on TV and stuff like that. Right. Because the merch, whether they bring your shirt to the arena or not, there's like a couple of trunks full of shirts that like you wear, you know, backstage segments, after the ring, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the merch guys were always Team Zach. Yeah, I remember I remember that <laughs> backstage they have a little when I was doing extra work, they have a little setup with all the shirts for the boys and I would yeah. always be like, "Oh man, can we get a couple of those?" Yeah. Um all right. <clears throat> I don't so no background, whatever. <laughs> that was that was it. We I don't know how we got there. But si- uh sign of the week this week is a nice big woo woo woo. Th- it's three signs. The guys look like Always love those kind of signs. Oh, it's the best. All right. In one of the weirdest segments to date, 24 episodes in, <laughs> we we get a debut of William Regal here. And so, he's in a hair stand. Who's the hair lady? That's the uh, that's Jan the makeup lady. Jan who now works lady. for AEW, I believe. Almost I, positive. I literally was like, she looks familiar. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Um, I remember he came to me wanting to be on the show. Okay. Uh, Regal's very smart. Yes. He knows like what's hot. What's hot, you know? Yeah. And not he didn't need a rub for me by any means, you know? Right, right, but right, I think right. he saw this as a way to, you know, not that he didn't get to show an entertaining side on television because he certainly has, yeah. but maybe show a different side. Right. And of course, it's it's William Regal. I was going to, of course, he wants to be on the show, of course. And I remember filming this and I'm thinking like, does he not know it's a five-minute show? Because that's that that that's why I had to split it up into like five segments. Okay, I was thinking that the very interesting editing in this episode, because because it was way times. too long to just be a standalone thing. Right. So the way it worked best, in my opinion, as the editor, was to kind of like come, spice come it up and tell the story that way. Yeah. Yeah. So the first segment, well, we won't spoil it. Uh, William Regal, he's he's talking about his bald spot. So that's what he's doing in the first segment. Yeah. So, then, so and, and and it's like I'm you you later find out like I'm like recording him. Yes. Like a hidden camera. Well, you spoiled it. Oh shit. Oops. Okay. Next segment, you say the internet title is a joke. It's just toy with stickers and you put it in the trash. Alundra Blaze style, uh toss it in the trash and uh we'll, we'll just leave it at why. that for now. Okay. Next segment, Big O's on a business call in a suit. Looks pretty good in the suit. He's walking somewhere. He's talking about reports not adding up. He goes into the gym. Five hours later, he comes back. I'm sure that's probably a rib on him because he spends too much time in the gym. He comes out, but now he's screaming. He's wearing his gym clothes, and he's screaming about going to an 18-plus club. That's how we do it. Blah, 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 blah. Nice little character. Yeah, yeah. show show another side of Big O that he's yeah. not just this meathead. And even today, like Big O does like real estate for real. So that's like ten years later, it's almost the same thing. He's probably making these deals, and then five hours later, coming out of the gym. Right, right. <laughs> like talking to his boys about going out. By the way, and you probably see this picture right now. One hell of a fade. I don't know if you noticed this with stars in the back of his head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell of a haircut. Hell of a haircut. Yeah. I think it went to Michael the Barber for that. We're, we're back with Regal. Uh, this time he's complaining about Seamus, and then he calls Jan uh, a silly moo, hmm. which I don't, I don't know if you could say nowadays. <laughs> <clears throat> we get the broski of the week. Bro. This one was fantastic. Blown away. This is a cartoon. It's like a Saturday morning style cartoon. They got Scott Stanford to do the voiceover. It's so well done. They got Optimus Primo in there. Here's my question. I have the original footage. Can I play it right now? Sure. Boom. Coming to Saturday morning, it's Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. Join Zack and his friends in the Zack Pack. Scott Stanford. The Big O. Zack's dad. Princess Leia, and Optimus Primo, for fist-pumping fun and adventure. You will totally mark out, bro. 
for Zach Ryder. All right, so the the sad news here is usually with the broski of the week, uh, you know, you get to see the person, so they get over that way. Right. You don't have any idea who this was, who did this no. awesome thing. No. Yeah, so he doesn't, or she does not get, get the, the credit uh, that they deserve. So if you are watching this and you did this, reach out to us. Please do. It was an amazing cartoon. It's um, beautiful. It's great. It's like right out of a Saturday morning. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so I thought it was a great job. I was kind of blown away. It was and one the of the fact better... That they probably messaged Stanford and was like, can you do the voiceover for this? And yeah, I, like, yes. I, I don't recall exactly if like Stanford knew the person or what, but it was probably one of the best Broski of the Weeks ever. 100%. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So two back-to-back great Broski of the Weeks with Ring Rope Rebellion and this. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then you're back. You say the new shirt. You got a, your new shirt. You're wearing it. Um, and you're like, well, you know, I got this new shirt. That may That means that I'm... I actually am the internet champion. And honestly, in a kind of like uh not really climactic. It's a very anticlimactic debut, but you show the 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 friggin' internet champion. Chip. I disagree with you. I believe that's like one of the most iconic moments in the show history. Really? Just pulling it out just like boom. Yeah. Not even a build up. Even if you watch the 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 trailer to this show that we put on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That clip is what I'm watching on the flip camera. Ah. Because, uh, I mean, this is it right here, the Wildcat belts. Let's put up the the original concept art, too, for the, the for the belt. Now, I knew I wanted to make something legitimate, you know? Uh, and I worked with Wildcat. I found Wildcat online. Now, now and- hold on a second. When about are you starting this? Episode 15? 5? Remind me to look that up for next week. Okay. Um, but this is the real deal, baby. This is like... It's an unreal belt. It, it's this, in a figure form. It's that Mattel made it. Yeah. Uh, it's in the video game. It's on one of my t-shirts. Uh, they never made the replica or a kid's replica. Years later, I found out that Figures Toy Company was going to make a replica. And there's actually some prototypes out there. And I almost bought one, but it would have cost me more than I spent on the real internet title so that felt weird to me yeah uh but this is like this is it this to me this is historic Uh, i really i truthfully believe that um and a funny story about this i don't know if it's this week it might be in a couple weeks but i'll tell the story now because i've told a couple of spots or i've told it before in a couple different spots so i wanted to wear it on television right like this belt this is this is the one you know it's the it, but this is the same logo that's on the T-shirt. It's on my gear. So now it's, I'm like just one big walking billboard like John Cena, learning from the best. So uh, Jamie Noble convinces me to wear it out to ringside because Triple H is doing rehearsals. Uh, so sometimes Vince would do rehearsals, like run rehearsals, Triple H. So I want to show it off. So I show it to Triple H, and he's not happy. And uh, This is a couple he, weeks later. I want to say it's a couple weeks later. Okay. It has to be because I just get it. Yes. And uh, it's in front of people. So there's witnesses. So I'm wearing it. Uh, and he calls me a mark for myself. And I'm trying to explain like I don't really think. Are you like trying to giggle your way out of this? Yeah, sure. But I- oh. I'm saying I'm saying something to the effect of. I don't really think I'm the champion of the internet. It's a gimmick, like the million dollar championship. And he says, if this was 10 years ago, the whole locker room would have kicked your ass. And then I reply with, the whole locker room loves me. <laughs> <laughs> and he re- his reply, that's why the houses are half empty. <laughs> I, don't even know, I don't even know what that means. It's my fault. <laughs> Oh my god! It's, it's my it's my fault that the house is half empty because the rock because the the boys like me doesn't even make sense. <laughs> doesn't even make sense. <laughs> and then what so, do you do? Just Homer into a bush? Pretty much. And then uh, I never came out with the title. <laughs> and is Jamie Noble just like in the corner, like? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's witnesses. I'm not gonna listen. We're not going to wrestlers court here. We're not bringing people up to the witness stand. But there are enough witnesses out there who uh, can back that story up. 
So I never got to come out with the title on TV Dude. after that. Let me process this. Hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> that is that is one hell of a story. I I am so I feel so embarrassed for you. Right. Like I just like I'm cringing. I I couldn't even imagine that I'm putting myself in that situation right now. I know what it's like in rehearsals where everybody's sure. there, kind of right. quiet, just watching yeah. what's going on. And if they catch catch wind of that, that is so shitty. It it was just a weird time, yeah. you know. <laughs> Let's just say that. Mark for yourself. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever like clear the air with them about it? Uh. Yes and no. Okay. You know. All right. All right. Well, crazy. I I'm look. I'm thrilled that you debuted the new inter- internet title. Obviously, the, you've done a lot of cool things with that. Uh, since you did it, you got a, you got a brand new one there behind you. You're defending oh, that's that right, on baby. Indies right now. Still bring it to the indie shows. Bro, you know, you're, still bring it to the meet and greets. Of course. Um, all right. Moving on. Uh, Regal's back. And he's asking for his nails to be done this time. <laughs> Just more Regal. Um, then we get a little Stanford segment. I don't know if he was trying this, to make this look like some sort of documentary interview segment but he's like i thought, it was, I thought it was pretty good he's talking about how he doesn't have a shirt you didn't give him a shirt yeah um in a tweet that i didn't add you said sorry stanford tyler rex took like five of them <laughs> um but he shows he shows off his four emmys which oh, are legitimate yeah. yeah yeah that's true i emmy I award-winning scott stanford yeah he's the man we, we gotta have him on let's have him on like next week uh Regal is back. He's now complaining about Daniel Bryan, saying that Daniel Bryan keeps telling people that he was trained by him. So he's burying Daniel Bryan there. Now you talk about your Raw match. You say you were on Raw in a match, and you won, and you play your music, and you use pictures, which here's where you can see Michael Cole in his... The worst Rough Rider in history. The picture looks great. (laughs) It's so bad. All right, we get a little payoff here. Regal's back. He's in the chair. He notices you filming, and now he starts being nice, like, oh, my God, I didn't realize it. I was burying everybody. I'm getting my bald spot. I'm getting my nails done. It worked out. It was a good little uh, ending. A yeah, little sure. too long, but you're not going to you're not gonna tell Regal to shorten it up. Sure. And I'm certainly not going to cut things. Oh, my God, yeah. So, I mean, maybe I trimmed like five seconds here and there, maybe. Yeah. But I'm certainly not going to you know, leave things out uh, drastically. So that's why I split it up. And played it throughout the episode. I but agree. To have it someone is. like Regal wanting to be on the show, more star power. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna do him justice. Uh, as a, the producer in me is like, man, the sound is bad here. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like hard to even hear what he's saying. Um, but whatever, you got Regal on the show. Final, uh, you got a little thing here. Final segment. Your dad is wearing John Morrison gear. Well, I think the. The the joke is that it's supposed to you're supposed to think it's Morrison like my dad I guess he was competing for like a bodybuilding show at that time so all tan and jacked up bro look great so you start from the the feet up and the slow pan and then it's my dad right <laughs> and then he takes that cardboard Molina cut out and makes out with it <laughs> dude he looks phenomenal here yeah um but he what did you like hey you're like hey John can I borrow your gear for the weekend pretty much yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> my dad put this on exactly all right cool. Uh, and you close out the show, but this, but you kind of mess up. There's a little blooper. What happens? You say something about I forget what it was, but you were like, "Like me on Facebook, like 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 me on Facebook." It was like a little blooper. I oh, don't I don't. I didn't even catch that when I was watching it today. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I still don't have access. Well, I do have access to my Facebook, but it, it's right. still the old one. I still have a fan page. I'm trying to sync them up. I guess Papa Bear Paul couldn't get it done. So if anybody knows how to sync up fan pages, let me know. And please don't send me like the Google way. I need a real human at Facebook. Right. Um, and then it, it goes into, I don't know if you caught it at the end. I switched up the graphics. So oh, it's my notice. t-shirt graphics. So I want everything to fit. And I even have a slide, if whatever it's called, where it's just the QR code. Mm. So I'm trying to get that all over. That's great. You know? All right. Before we close out the show, let's hear a word from our sponsors. And 
We are back. Are you serious, Broski? Are you serious, bro? Yeah, the Are You Serious Bro tweet of the week. All you got to do is tweet me something using the hashtag Are You Serious Bro. If it pops me, I'll send you an 8x10. Uh, Comic Con at home was a couple days ago. Uh, JN Fernandez 1980. Come on, at Mattel, at Action Fig Attack, and at Bill McKenna. I was waiting to check out for five minutes and get this. Are you serious, bro? It's a picture of the Ultimate Edition Sergeant Slaughter being out of stock. Hey, guys. Uh, Full disclosure, Mattel did send me one, but I still wanted two more. So I was on Mattel Creations trying to get it. Same thing happened to me. I was in the queue, the virtual queue, and then all of a sudden said out of stock. So because uh, of the territory, it sucks. It's unfortunate. Uh, I already made a deal with somebody to to get another one because this Sergeant Slaughter was so beautiful that I want one. Mint to the package, one to take out, and then there's that black card variant, which I want. So I want three. So this slaughter is so cool. I have no earthly reason to own it based on my rules, but I have to get it. Do you have Mr. T from last year? I do, but honestly, I have it up here in the box still and I might sell it. But you have a Slim Jim Macho? Yeah, but in the box or no? Slim Slim I don't, but but I do have a Slim Jim Macho, but that fits my rules. If I were you, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. Okay. I would try to get another Slim Jim Macho in the box, and then you could start like a Mattel Comic Con collection. Aha! Uh-huh. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I thought about that, but I, I might put the I don't know, but it's such a great figure. You're the right. The slaughter is just insane. It's so good. Uh, thank you, to Mattel, for sending it to me. I'm not gonna get into why I think, you know, a lot of people. I saw out your there, tweet, bro, and you had. <laughs> hundreds of replies and i said i'm not even getting into this <laughs> listen i understand the frustration i didn't get it and i know they're saying but you did get it yes i understand but there's there's other toys that i love that i try to get and don't get and you know it sucks but that's that's a it's life yeah it's it's a limited edition yeah think about all the people it's it, it's simple supply and demand and if you want something to be successful you want <laughs> The demand to be greater than supply. This is the toy business of the toy friendship. And does it suck when I don't get something? Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course it does. And then I have to go on eBay. And yes, I have to pay more money. But that that is the game. That's how it's always been. Whether before the internet, people were just buying them up in stores. It's how it's always going to be. And I know this is not a figure show. But I mean, it is important. You know, that like people, instead of complaining... Hmm. Like just relax a second. Is it the? Does it suck? Yes, it sucks. Trust me. Yeah. There, there are certain things that I didn't get this Comic Con, and I'm gonna have to pay more money on eBay. But that's just what it is. And then sometimes I will get the thing when I try to get it. Right. Oh, and then maybe you'll get two, and you'll make yeah. some money, and yeah. then that'll pay for when you have to whatever. It it all evens out if you it all, it, hard it is what it is. I just yeah. that that's that's just. <laughs> And it's not just wrestling figures. I'm I'm not talking. I'm talking about other toy lines. I'm talking. There's sneakers. Whether it be like my, like tickets for things. Like think about it. If, if a, a ticket goes and sells for a hot wrestling show or a hot concert, and they sell out really quick, that's because more people wanted to go than how many tickets there were. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody being like Fenway Park? Do better. Get more seats. Yeah, and like <laughs> for the listen, demand. Listen, guys, don't get me wrong. I wish, and even for our major pod merch. I wish that it was a genuine fan getting it as opposed to somebody who's going to buy it and flip it. But that's what keep that's that's what keeps this this game going, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, there are some people let's say the sale is at 12 noon. Who's at, who's working at 12 noon? Can't go on the site. So now, thanks to a scalper buying it, can go on eBay and it, it is what it is, guys. Don't hate the player, hate the game, as Booker T once <laughs> said. You know? I love it. Uh, all right, all right. That you did the Are Serious, bro. All right, uh, we already did know your bro. Characters debuted in this show: Regal, Jan, the hair lady. <laughs> uh, the internet title, uh, returning. If, if you if you see her at AEW, you I'm should get her to do a little voice memo, like play her the clip and say like, "Hey, how did Z trolling our story change your life?" <laughs> you debuted in episode twenty four. Like a little interview. You should do it, like man on the street. All right. 
Uh, returning Stanford, Big O and Dad. Uh, this episode, 281,244. That's up. Big time. Mm. And then uh, the clock's in at six minutes and three seconds. A lot of cool things. A lot of big things here in episode 24. This We're was an 25. important episode. This was very important. The The debut of the new championship is very important. Your shirt. The new shirt. Like Things are starting to pick up. I had the match. Things are slowly picking up. So this is now July... So we still have to August, September, October, and then like November, December, which is where it really peaks. So we're like halfway there. Mm. Um, real quick, how how did that shirt initially sell? Amazing. Really? Yes. And you're just going, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is the first real Zach Ryder Z Trilong. And so now everyone who's a Z Trilong and Story fan is like, oh, this is the shirt that represents my oh, yeah. thing that I love. Yes. Yeah. And then the headbands come out very, very soon. And then that's where I switched my signature up because they were doing – we'll talk about it when it comes out. Um, but real quick, at the the merch stands at first, they were selling my headband with like a – not an 8x10. Maybe it was like a, a 4x5. And I had to sign like hundreds of them. So I, I had to make my signature easier. Mm. I'm signing hundreds a day. Right. right. And you got to call a match and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Major WF Pod for shirts for this show. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Matt Cardona. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Smart Mark Sterling. Today I'm wearing this Roots of Fight Bret Hart. Bret! It's like a classic. Isn't that neat? Oh, yeah. I, I don't wear this shirt often because it's like white and you wear a white shirt like twice and it's ruined. Well, I, I wore all white to homecoming, so I'm predicting those are going to be ruined. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Anything else to plug? You, you mentioned it. The, the, the stuff goes on sale. There's yeah, I mean, sale. just so com slash Matt Cardona, com slash Major WF Pod, Matt Cardona Merch.com, Major Pod Merch.com. If you want to listen to these shows uh, early and ad free, go to Patreon.com slash Major WF Pod. So much cool content on there. And, uh, you know, if you're into the the chemistry that Mark and I have, what about when we're competing in the FWF? You can listen to season one, available wherever you find your podcast. Six months of me and Brian rebooking the Attitude Era of the Figures, but the FWF is back. And only on Patreon, uh, my turmoil brand against Mark's brand. And don't get that confused with the real FWF, like FWF, FWF Live. Live. Which we are we are doing a second show in the fall, and I think the match I'll announce it right here. Matt Cardona always ready versus Smart Mark Sterling. No, Matt Cardona always ready with Bob Cardona in his corner in a Long Island street fight against Bugo 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 oh, with rapid shirt. delivery Roy Fox in his corner. Oh my God! Here we so, go. That's the money match. Big O versus Matt Cardona 10 years later in a Long Island street fight. So love that. Yeah. It's going to be very similar. FWF Live 2 is going to be very similar to FWF Live 1 where you're going to be able to order it. Yes. Um, in advance, all that stuff. They're going to get some uh, bonuses and, and all that. But uh, yeah, it's it, a lot it's, of work. It's, and It's, it's kind of crazy because right now, in my mind, I'm planning three big shows. I'm planning major Wrestling for a Podcast Live 9, which is the first show. I'm also planning FWF. Live 2. <laughs> well, Live 2, but also FWF Heat Stroke, which is the, the Figure Wrestling Federation. <laughs> so I'm booking three live shows. Uh, which, all right, full stop, FWF. I'm very excited for it. Uh, if you don't know, if you're just coming into this because you're a Zack Ryder fan, if you don't know what really what we do at the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, uh, we're slowing this down a little bit. Me and Matt are booking a fantasy <laughs> fig fed in audio form, and you can listen to all season one. It's Matt versus Brian. It's on uh, on iTunes right now. Just search. Figure Wrestling Federation or FWF. It's insane. Listen to that. And we're doing more. It's me versus Matt this time. Uh, and one of my main guys right here. Just got him. 
Haven't even opened them. Oh, yet. I thought you were going to pick the Kurt Angle. Balls Mahoney. Balls Mahoney. I got big plans for balls. Is he going to be Silver Balls Mahoney in your bed? <laughs> think of that, but that's a great silver, idea. Silver. But I've got the silver. Oh, whatever. I'm not even getting into it. <laughs> Patreon.com slash me. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Close I think that's out. it. I think that's it, guys. Hell of an episode. Uh, yeah, hell of an episode, I think guys. I need to drink two beers every time. There you go. <laughs> this felt great. Um, hopefully next week will be uh, will be more live. Well, never live, but more more current. And I will have the GCW championship um, over my shoulder to go with my major pod and internet title. So mm. um, anyway, kick that major land thing out. No, no, no. The GCW title, like first I got to disinfect it. Oh. And then, then I, I'll, I, I'm not going to display it proudly. I'm going to be defending it all over the country, all over the world. I bet you the leather is chipping. I might have to get some custom purple strap warrior style. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should. you should get your own GCW title. That's. I thought it. about it. I thought about it. But like, how many gimmick titles do I need? Yeah, that's true. Maybe just the strap. Yeah. Anyway. All right, how guys. Uh, you all oh. like me on Facebook, but I don't really, can, you know, I don't really care about the like Facebook. Like one but. of the nine pages. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Buy all the merch. Drink some major PBR, and take care. Spike your hair. Just take care.